Hello, it's Jonathan Wellam of Rocklink Investment Partners, and it's March the 21st, 2018. Now, this is going to be our third in a series of videos on our new Rocklink Partners Fund that we launched uh, last fall. And it also is an opportunity for our clients that are not invested in the Rocklink Partners Fund to learn more about some of the key holdings that are also populated in their uh, in your segregated accounts in essence. So let's just jump right into it. Now the first slide up there is a disclaimer slide which we have to put up from a, a legal and regulatory perspective. And then the next slide we just highlight again our investment process. And uh, our point of putting that up again is just to remind you of the overall process that we use in terms of investing and what we're doing now in the, this slide and in the next slides that follow in the ensuing weeks is highlighting the industries and the businesses that we are investing in and why we're investing in those particular businesses. The next slide just to remind you again of the uh, fund itself. It's a no-load fund. There's no performance fees. It's just strictly an investment management fee based upon the amount of money that you put in the fund. And there's two classes, one for large investment deposits, which are charged 75 basis points per year, 0.75% on annual basis. And for smaller investments of 2,500 to uh, 250,000, it would be uh, 0.95 or 95 basis points per year. So uh, the next slides, two slides, which I'm just going to mention very quickly, just give you an overview of the eight main sectors that we are invested in. These are not the only sectors, but the eight main sectors. Now, last week uh, on the one slide that you have in front of you now, you can see that this, four, of the, four of those eight sectors would include infrastructure, financial, technology, and manufacturing. And last week we looked at infrastructure. This week we'll look at financial. And on the next slide, you see the other four sectors that we have uh, significant exposure to in the fund and also in our segregated accounts. Uh, you see precious metals, healthcare, agriculture, and water. Now I want to zip right in here now uh, and talk a little bit about the financial sector and the way we are approaching it within our particular fund. And the slide that you have up in front of you right now breaks out some of the subsectors within financial that we are looking at and finding exposure to through the various companies that we own. So for example, you can see private equity. A lot of people are talking about private equity, alternative investments. Well, we can, we can buy and get exposure to private equity by buying companies that are in that particular space. And we'll highlight the uh, company, for example, in a few moments. So we've, you can see the points that we make in terms of private equity and the opportunities that exist outside of the public markets. Second would be wealth management. Looking at the trend for global wealth management demand, asset protection, um, just the whole area of investment services. Third, retail banking, which we believe is really uh, one of the more um, utilit utilitarian areas. It's, you know, it's very much uh, a basic area. It's important retail banking. There's sort of less risk because you can spread that across millions of customers. And uh, we have some exposure to retail banking. And then lastly, alternative lending. So let's look at the, the four companies that we have exposure to at this point in our fund. And you can see those companies on the slide there, the different logos, Onyx, Input Capital, TD Bank, and Julius Baer. So let's look at Onyx just for a moment. This company was founded back in 1984 by Jerry Schwartz, and uh, it is a private equity firm that uh, acquires and builds active positions in companies that are not publicly traded. And so it gives us exposure to an alternative asset category. Currently, they have over $30 billion in assets under management. Very strong um, ownership in terms of the uh, partners. They own a lot of the company, so you've got alignment in terms of shareholders' interests. And um, we have a company now that has a very successful and proven track record. In fact, Onyx own capital itself, the shareholders uh, 
that own Onyx have over seven billion now in capital, and uh, they invest in equity pools, debt pools, and companies all over uh, the world, with a particular emphasis on North America. And so this is a, a great way to get exposure to the private equity market. And it's through an investment management company, which gives you tremendous operating leverage because they bring in other investors into their pools, they take positions in the pools, and you can make returns not only on having investments in the companies that they're buying, but also managing other people's investments in those particular pools. So it's a great asset management play, but in private equity. So Onyx, and it has a, a wonderful track record, lots of cash available, strong balance sheets. So if things get a little crazy in the market, they can take advantage of it. The second company is Input Capital. This is a smaller company, one of the smallest companies that we actually own, and it's the world's first canola streaming company and it builds on the success of other streaming and royalty companies which we'll talk more about when we look at the precious metals uh, sector in a couple of weeks and so this is a company that provides capital to farmers and in return gets a portion of their production and their focus up until now is strictly canola farmers in western Canada why do we like this business there's very high returns on invested capital. They're invest, they're, we call them IRRs. Their internal rates of return are high teens. So you're getting 18, 20% rates of return. This is a really high cash on cash business. They have been very successful out of the gate. This is a company with no debt, lots of cash, and it's very inexpensive. It really trades close to book value. And they've also more recently, in the last year and a half, put a nice dividend on the stock. So you're earning over 2% on the stock while they continue to grow the company at a very rapid rate. Now the stock performance of the company has been lackluster to say the least, but the underlying business performance has been terrific. And so uh, we're looking forward in the, in the days and months and even years ahead to uh, substantial capital growth um, through the ownership of this particular business. And uh, so input capital, you'll be hearing more about that. And uh, it's a key position in the fund and in, also in many of our segregated accounts. The third financial that we'll highlight falls largely into retail banking, and that's TD Bank. Uh, this is uh, one of the top 10 North American banks. They have about 25 million customers worldwide, 12 million active online and mobile clients, which is important uh, given the shift in technology and the importance of being online when it comes to financial services. They have over 1,500 branches throughout North America and about $1.3 trillion in assets as of the end of January. So this is a substantial, substantial bank. They also have a very large wealth management practice. And we've got a few uh, facts and figures about TD on the chart in front of you. Uh, most of their business is retail banking, which as I said before, is a bit more conservative, a bit more, uh, a bit safer if you will, because you can spread it over all of these millions of clients. They don't take as big a risk as you might in big commercial lending projects or investment banking. And, uh, and so we like that. They also have a, a substantial presence now in the United States, which gives them a, a strong North American presence. It's a company with a very successful long-term track record. If you go back to even the early 90s, this is a company that's been compounding at uh, between 12 and 15% a year. So astounding track record in terms of uh, execution on this company. The last company that we'll mention falls into the wealth management space, and that's Julius Baer. Now, Julius Baer is uh, a company that goes back to 1890, uh, prestigious history to this company. It's a pure play private banking business with a global footprint now in over 25 countries. And this is a Swiss-based bank. So um, one of the reasons why we like a Swiss-based bank is because it's trust and integrity and its ability to uh, gather assets from all around the world because of that great reputation that Switzerland still has 
um, even in 2018. So as we look at the world and we see wealth increasing, and as we see um, some, even some of the wealth disparities in some cases, uh, but individuals that are wealthy in Europe, North America, Latin America, a very, very large presence throughout the Far East. Um, Julius Baer has been able to um, gather and to attract an increasing proportion of that wealth. On the slide, we say that they manage around $350 billion. At latest count, that number is approaching $400 billion in assets. And um, we think, again, that uh, they're really well positioned um, around the world. They actually have over 1,400 relationship managers, those individuals gathering assets and looking after clients all around the world. So it's a very service intense model and attracting money uh, in some of the uh, areas where wealth is most concentrated. Uh, back in 2013, they actually bought Merrill Lynch's global or international business and that really gave them a tremendous footprint as I said uh, in the Far East, the Middle East and in Latin America. So this is a wealth gathering, wealth management machine. So those are four companies that fall into the financial sector and give you a, again a feel for some of the businesses that we're investing in. Private equity, wealth management, retail banking, alternative lending, all ways to get exposure to a, a essential and high growth industry in the financial service sector. So hopefully, again, that's been helpful and uh, that gives you a better sense of the companies that we are investing in both in our segregated accounts and also now in the Rocklink Partners Fund. Thank you very much. Bye now.